Hello again. In this session, we're going to have a look at Group 2 on the Cost Plan tab. This is where construction areas, rentable areas, and elemental quantities are measured. Please note that if I hover over the Construction Areas button, I get a control tip, which is this little box that is displayed at the lower left, which disappears actually when I move the cursor off the Construction Areas button. But as you'll see, it gives you a small explanation about what should be done and why you measure construction areas. As you see from the control tip, uh, construction areas are measured in order to arrive at a cost per square meter from each section. I'm going to open the window and you'll see what kind of inputs are required. If you have any problems, look at the help for the construction areas. It is very comprehensive. Uh, what I'll do is I will show you how to measure the construction areas. For example, if you are measuring a building where there is basement parking, you would say, this item is my basement and it comprises structural parking. I then measure the area of the structural parking by double clicking next to that description. And you'll see here it is listed uh, as basement and I need two measurements because it is square meter, i.e. an area. Um, and I'm just going to say that the basement is, um, let us say, 30 by 30 meters. Not very big. Because I set my uh, section up as being locational, I now need to tell this dim sheet which location it belongs to. And that is going to be basement. When I'm happy with my dim sheet that it contains everything that I want, I can click OK and it will be updated. Notice that it has filled in the unit. What you'll notice now is that there are some additional inputs required lower down on the screen. Let us say that I'm going to work on um, a six square meter area for each bay. That will mean that I have 150 parking bays and you'll see that it has updated um, the area of each bay. In the basement I don't have any parking bays so you'll see now it's updated construction area per open parking day as zero. In addition at the top <coughs> this input which is construction site area is automatically calculated and because I said that my basement was in fact all structural parking, it hasn't updated the site area because in fact it is comprised all of structural parking. If you should want for any reason to change the area of your basement, you can simply go back to the dim sheet by double clicking um, in the record selector bar to the left of the word basement and you get taken back to the same dim sheet and you can simply change uh, whatever your figures are to come to a new area. I'm simply going to click OK and if your construction area has changed you might need to um, re-input the number of, of structural parking bays that you specified in the first place. Now I'm going to measure some construction areas for the ground floor. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to make it the same um, area as the basement. Uh, it is not structural parking and it is not open parking, so I will not tick either of these checkboxes. I'm simply going to double click to go to the dim sheet and enter my uh, dimensions for the ground floor. And of course now I have to select which location it is, which is going to be ground floor. And I will click OK. Please note, if you have locations defined, each dim sheet will 
force you to specify the location. If you forget, you'll get a message saying, please enter location, and you'll be returned to this input where you simply select whatever location is applicable. I'm going to say OK, and this DIM will be updated. And you'll notice now that it says construction area at the bottom is 900 square meters, and there of course is our previous entry which is the structural parking area. Now what you'll see is that I've entered construction areas for the offices. You'll remember when we set up our locations we said that the offices were the first and second floors. And because there are two floors of offices, we assigned a factor on that location of 2. So my measurement totals 900 square meters. And here we have the application of the locational factor which equates now to 1800 square meters for both of the office floors. And lastly, I'm just going to enter construction areas for the residential floors. Um, I'll measure it. And I'll measure them slightly smaller than the lower floors. Uh, let's just say I'm going to make this 20 by 30 um, and this is residential and my location here will be residential floors. Note that as soon as I select the location residential floors, the locational factor is read from the locations table and we have 600 square meters multiplied by 3 which is now 1800 square meters. I click OK to update it. I've just realized that uh, although I now want to add some uh, open parking, I haven't set up a location that is relevant to open parking. So I'm going to go to my sections and locations and I'm going to add an extra location. I'm going to call it External Works. Um, and that will do the trick. So having added that location, I'm now going to add uh, open parking and I'm going to tick open parking because that's relevant and I'm going to go and measure the open parking. Let's say I'm going to allow for 100 bays at 6 square meters per bay and I now need to select my external works location and you'll see there is no factor so I'm going to click OK to update it and what you'll notice now is that I have um, a construction area per open parking bay of six square meters. This concludes the measurement of construction or site areas. What you should know is that you can later when using AND ON you can actually and on from the dimensions that you have entered here. Thank you.